Welcome to Aussie Wristwatch. I'm Jessica Liley. Today we're going to delve into a little bit of Bremel. Uh, thank you to Rowena from the Melbourne store who's lent me the watch that I'm going to be reviewing today. It's the, it's the first time I've gotten up close and personal with one of these watches so I'm super excited and very appreciative to her for sending it to me. So Bremel, who are they? Well, they're two brothers who had a passion for flying planes. Uh, I've actually heard, I think, Giles talk about the story firsthand, which I cannot remember, which is terrible because it was a great yarn. But there is a abridged version, so to speak, on their website, which I've taken the liberty of refreshing my memory with. Nick and Giles fly planes. So as the story goes, they were flying their bli their bli their, their, their biplane. Uh, they had to make an emergency landing. I'm not even sure whether they crashed or not. Uh, they landed in a farm somewhere in France. They didn't want to get discovered by the authorities, so they stayed with a farmer who was very gracious in his hospitality. I think the host had flown aircraft during the war, a similar nature to the one in which they were actually flying that landed in his pumpkin patch. I don't know what he was farming. He had restored clocks. He also had his father's wristwatch that he'd kept throughout the years as an heirloom. And eventually the boy wanting to thank him for his hospitality did. They named his company after him. The farmer's name was Anton Bremont. Pretty clear these guys love adventure. And in particular, they love flying, which is ironic because today I'm going to actually be reviewing one of their dive watches, but it's still in the spirit of adventure, whether it's air, air land, sea, etc and the thing i quite like about this brand is that it's the ethos of the brand they just love watches and they've turned themselves into a really um fun micro brand doing big things this watch i think in particular is definitely within the spirit of that the adventure of these guys is pretty extraordinary they're avid flyers pilots I should call them uh, and you know they lost their father in a tragic accident in which I think Nick broke like 30 bones in his body which is pretty horrific and then still managed to actually well survive and then thrive they made this brand and the whole ethos of the brand at least in my words is adventure and attention to detail and engineering, which I think really comes from that pilot spirit. I'm not an engineer. I'm certainly not a pilot. I had dreams as a child of being like a, a Navy pilot. Here it would have been helicopters because we don't have jets, but I just didn't have the engineering mind for that. So to me, people who have kind of melded that passion with the passion of watchmaking, I think is very cool. And there's a lot of synergies there. It's you know, I guess it's one of the reasons I don't try to bullshit anyone about my knowledge of movements because my level of understanding of that is nowhere near most uh, watch collectors understanding. And I don't want to sit here and tell you guys how to suck eggs when I've got no idea. I'm more about aesthetics, how the watch makes you feel, uh, what the watch makes you feel and how it resonates with you. And I think they're equally as important as what the movement is inside. The movement, of course, will correlate, not always, of course, but to price. And so that's where I think the movement really comes in. Now it's wrapped in plastic because as I said, it's it's been lent to me and I, uh, I'm, maybe I will take the plastic off at some point, but I haven't yet been bold enough to do that. My first impressions of this watch when I got it, and you know, it traveled to me in a travel pouch, so it didn't come in its nice fancy box, which is, don't get me wrong, totally acceptable, totally get that. And even in that, my point being, even in that little travel box, when I, once I opened it, I was like, shit, this is a really lovely watch. It looks really cool. You guys know I'm a dive watch fan, so I'm already like on a degree of difficulty, like, we're already up there in terms of my favorite kind of watch, right? I don't dislike pilot watches. I just haven't got into them probably yet is the right word, but uh, we don't need to get into them right now because uh, dive watches satisfy that need in a great way. This is their Supermarine S302. Uh, and it's also got a GMT function. Now I'm beginning to love, this has a GMT bezel on here. This is my Dan Henry uh, 1972 Maverick. It's the automatic. And I'm really enjoying the uh, the GMT function on this watch. So to get 
a watch that's a dive watch that has an extra complication with the GMT bezel kind of excites me a little bit I must say it's also a dive watch you guessed it it's gonna have a unidirectional bezel that rotates um, which my friends last night at the Australian Watch Club love that group by the way thanks Sam for all your work with that group but my friends there last night gave me a very quick lesson don't laugh about how to actually use the dive watch bezel yep I had never used it before once they um, regaled with me the wonders of timing your eggs on the stove and everything I thought wow this is amazing the only flaw in that watch is dare I say I use good old Siri for that because I need the alarm to go off to actually remind me that I'm timing something and who else out there puts the alarm on has the alarm go off and goes hmm what's that for anyway I digress let's go back to the watch shall we GMT function unidirectional rotating bezel for the dive watch function of course uh, and it comes in either this rubber strap or a classic uh, steel bracelet now the rubber strap is amazing I haven't worn it yet but it's so lovely and soft it's not stiff it's just I can tell already without putting this on it's going to fit and be comfortable as a glove so let's put it on shall we in you can see my uh, initial thoughts and I promise you I have not put this on until now sorry Rowena I'm just gonna take the plastic off I will put it back on uh, upon return let's put it over there safely oh, wow it's actually a really beautiful watch here we go I have it at modestly sized wrist actually but it's still it's still small at like all good rubber straps we have this issue how good is that looks amazing I mean sure the strap could be a little bit shorter I'll look up whether it comes in you can get a slightly smaller strap but it fits fantastically and it looks let's be honest rubber for a dive watch still for me hands down the way to go so movement is a modified caliber 11 and a half BE 932 AV 25 joules it's 50 hours power reserve as I said it's got the central GMT hour minute second date at three hour the case stainless steel Roman trip tick case that's a um, registered trademark construction with scratch resistant DLC treated case barrel it's a bicolor blue and green aluminium unidirectional 24 hour bezel case diameter is 40 millimeters with a case length of 49 millimeters which you can see quite clearly on the rubber strap with the rubber um, curving in the way it does however it 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 tends to curve to the wrist quite well or at least my wrist if I, you had a smaller wrist I think you'd run into a little bit of problem with that case step 13 millimeter lug width 20 and the weight is 79 grams the case back is a stainless steel screw in with decorated closed case back the decoration is a is that a Spitfire I'm gonna have to look that up in the specs but it looks very cool looks very cool indeed and I, and I kind of like the fact that they've done a nod to their roots as pilots and their love of aviation on a dive watch crystal domed anti-reflective scratch resistant sapphire crystal 300 meters water resistant the ratings is chronometer rated to ISO 3159 standard greater minds than me will understand that better but I know you'll want to know it. and as I said it's a strap this one comes on the blue integrated rubber there's also a vintage brown leather or stainless steel bracelet each of these models I'll put the stock photos up that uh, Rowena was kind enough to also send to me in the press pack thanks makes makes life so much easier when people actually send me the press pack for things because my photography is shit that's not what I'm here for I'm trying to get better at it guys but I only use my iPhone so there's only so much I can do uh, but the stock photos are fantastic they make the, the watch look brilliant the watch actually looks brilliant in real life I can confirm that so it's good to know and I know people used to say blue and green should never be seen but in this model it should definitely be seen yeah it looks fantastic I'm actually really enjoying uh, the aesthetics of this watch I think they've done a really fantastic job at making a really beautiful yet fit for purpose dive watch now I also laugh because most of us don't dive let alone dive with our dive watch but I know there are legit divers out there who 
may or may not um, go for this watch. This launched in October, so as usual, I am late to the party, but who cares? <laughs> this model cost-wise, Australian is 6,200. That works out to be 3,250 British pounds or 3,750 US dollars. So we're not quite double the price, but we're double the price, people. It's the way it's always been. Is it value for money? I mean, that's an excellent question. And from a personal standpoint, it's really hard to answer this. So because I'm not in the market at the moment for a watch in this price bracket, um, but let's compare it to say my Omega, which I think now, and I keep getting this wrong, but I think it's around the $15,000 mark now. And when I purchased it, it was about maybe 11-ish. And that was in 2019. So this is like about, let's call it for argument's sake, half the price. And it's about, it's not cost certified or, meta, or metas tested, but it's effectively a dive watch. It's got an extra function my, my dive watch does not have. Does it have the same uh, je ne sais quoi as Omega? Well, it depends who you are, I guess. I mean, it's definitely, this is not James Bond's watch. I mean, arguably, I guess these guys could throw their hat in the ring for the next, um, the next Bond franchise when it's announced and released. I mean, actually guys, you heard it here first. It's not a bad idea now that I'm playing with the GMT function of this watch, which is actually very nice and very easy to use, guys. Let's just digress for a minute. Can you please consider what I've just said? I think you should make a pitch to be the new James Bond watch. That would be very cool. And you're an English brand, so I think it kind of just fit. Just saying. This watch compared to my Omega Seamaster. Again, it's it's kind of apples and oranges, but for argument's sake, it's it's a solid dive watch. It's got heritage behind it in a uh, what I'd call, even though a bigger, but a micro brand and independent micro brand independent. It's got class. It's got style. It's fit for the purpose in which it was intended to dive uh, in terms of its specifications, and it's really quite elegant and looks great on the wrist. It doesn't have the toothpaste cap helium escape valve, which doesn't bother me on my Omega, but I know it does for some others. So perhaps we do have a cheaper alternative. Perhaps we do have a cheaper alternative to a Rolex Submariner. Definitely in a different um, realm in the sense that I think if I'm comparing this to the, um, the Seamaster versus Submariner, I think there's some more clearer synergies here with the Omega than there is maybe the Subby. I'm talking more on aesthetics, guys. Don't don't barrage me in the comments with the movements. This is irrelevant for this. We know that they're all different movements. We know Omega, Rolex, whole different category. But I'm having a bit of fun here, all right? Just, just go with it. Tudor. 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 I mean, someone had a crack at me about how I say Tudor. I'm Australian. It's Tudor. Okay, now we're, now we're heading into a similar price point. Does this stack up to a Tudor? I think that's based on your personal preference. I've talked about in another video how I was wrong about Tudor. It's not the poor man's Rolex. They, have, they can stand on their own very big, strong feet. But again, for an independent, because Tudor is not independent, remember, part of Rolex. Lots of money behind them in terms of what they can do with their um, R&D, and how they produce their product. So not, again, not apples with apples, but I think maybe this watch might stack up a little bit. Yep, great clicky bezel, awesome. The GMT works a treat. I'm very excited about this. So I wonder, Bremel, have you, have you actually come up with an alternative to some of those brands at a cheaper price point? I actually, yeah. I mean, I've only just had this yesterday, so I haven't spent a lot of time with it. And because it's on loan, I'm not going to take it out on an adventure because I can't afford to um, pay the replacement cost if something goes wrong with it. So I'm just going to, you know, have a little fun with it from this point of view. But it is, it is actually a really lovely watch, like very pretty. It's well constructed. Again, I'm not going to look under the hood. I wouldn't know what I was looking for anyway in love with this.
rubber bracelet or rubber strap sorry as we call it talked about okay we've talked about specs we've talked about you know whether it's a rolex killer or an omega killer and you know take that as a, a fun conversation for what it is competitor to a tutor yeah potentially um, because i kind of like i like independent watches i really do i mean don't get me wrong i buy uh big brands i do and i will continue to do that where i'd like to go i think with my collection in conjunction with continuing to get some of my favorite pieces from the bigger brands is to build a collection from independence i've talked about wanting to collect field watches i'm still very much in that space in terms of playing around with that you know i haven't moved on but i do love discovering independent brands and i'd love to add them to my collection in a little bit more detail and you know i've I've said this is the first time I've been like full on hands on with a Bremont and uh, I'm really enjoying it. I've looked at their watches. I went to an event earlier this where I met Rowena. Thank God she remembered me. I remembered her face. I'm hopeless with names. Um, and like, I think it was Giles. I'm going to get this wrong because again, I'm useless with names. But one, one, of, one of the brothers was at this event and so he's talking about the watches. He told those really great stories about, you know, how the brand came to be. And I came home pumped from that. You know, you can get a watch if you're ejected from your um, seat on a plane. Uh, and again, I can't remember the name of that watch, but I love that. Like the only people who can have that watch are those people. So I don't know whether I'd be happy to have that claim to fame, to be honest with you. I don't know if I want to get ejected from my seat. But if you do, there's a watch for you. Uh, <laughs> goodness gracious. So <laughs> I think playing in the... Uh, the space of dive watches is fantastic. I actually really enjoy some of their pilot's watches, but again, I'm not a pilot, so I don't have, and whilst I'm not a diver, I love swimming. I love the ocean. I'm Australian. It's what we do. We get thrown in at birth almost. Um, we learn to swim and you go to a beach and you just swim. So I love dive watches, I think partly for that reason, because I love the ocean. I wanted to always be in the Navy. I just love the affinity of the ocean. So for me, a dive watch probably speaks to me in that regard way more than a field watch or a pilot's watch, no matter how awesome they also are. I love the sense of adventure with this brand. I can't wait to go to the store in Melbourne when I'm down in Melbourne. So land, sea and air, they kind of got it. You've got you covered for whatever adventure you want to go on, whether it's your weekend adventure or you're going to fall on climb Mount Everest. I think these guys are going to have you covered. I've even seen George Bamford do a couple of iterations uh, of some of these watches, uh, which are very awesome because he also loves the brand. I mean, I could listen to Bamford talk with his posh UK accent uh, until the cows come home. He could read a textbook for all I care. Love it. Always love a good British accent. If you love dive watches, if you're looking for a dive watch in that 6,000 range, I think you should put this on your list to go and check out. Uh, like I said, store in Melbourne. If you can't get to the store, I can't help you other than I'll I will put up some photos and some video of this watch for you but maybe it's worth considering uh, if you're considering a tutor uh, if you can uh, my friends at Oris will kill me but if you're considering an Oris all of those throw Bremont in the mix and check them out um, for something different uh, if you want a talking piece at at anywhere really it's it's an independent brand so it's not as well known in a good way uh, I think people who love watches appreciate Bremont and I think you will too. Uh, Rowena didn't pay me to say any of these remarks. You know guys I'm generally positive for my views unless something's an absolute stinker. Uh, I think I'm yet to get an absolute stinker. Like I said I think one of the highlights for me is actually this rubber strap. I don't know what they've done with it to make it like this but it's so brilliantly comfortable and again the the hero model is the one that Rowena sent me so blue and green blue is my favorite color you've got a could it have done with a uh, clear case back maybe I mean the subby doesn't have one but I've got one on the Omega and it looks really cool it's it's a nice to have option I think without being a deal breaker um, the rubber strap is perfect don't change that at all. Like I said, I think distance um, on the watch case, 
is probably going to be a little large for some of the smaller wrists. My wrist is probably the smallest you could go. So that might be slightly problematic for people, but it's still 40 millimeters, whereas I've got a 43.5 millimeter Seamaster, which does sit bigger. So, you know, give and take, right? Uh, the crown's pretty great. It kind of is pretty responsive to you when you twist it out. Yep, yeah, it's all separate functions for like date change, GMT, hour. So it's a solid watch from that regard. The bezel, the clickiness of that is great. Nothing will, I think, unfortunately beat my um my Rolex Submariner. That thing is perfection. But this is actually really great. It's easy to twist, but without being too too easy. Makes a great clicky sound. So for you fidget people out there, it's perfect. Thank you again, Rowena, for sharing this with me. I will send it back to you very soon. Thank you to the brothers at Bremont. I'd love to come and see uh, your factory and your workplace when I eventually get to England, which I haven't done. It is so on my list, desperate to get to England. So please invite me when I'm there, I will come running. And until next time, let me know your thoughts on this watch if you've got one if you've got thoughts on the brand uh, i've probably missed something let me know what i've missed of course uh, and until next time like subscribe do all those things the algorithm loves if you loved watching this have a great week everyone bye